Uh, my name is Sophia Holtquist, and I am a composer and artist that goes by the name Drummond Lace. When I got to Berkeley and when I got to college, I had zero knowledge of electronic music. But you know, I was kind of taught that women stay away from electronic things, you know, like it was, it was very much sort of that. So when I got to school, I sort of had this rejection for anything electronic. I was kind of scared of it, to be honest, um, which is really interesting now that I'm sitting next to all of this. The first sampler I ever bought is the one that you see right here, um, the SP404 that has been with me forever and it's all dented and I can't get myself to get a new one just because we've been through so much. And then, I mean, I, I'm trying to remember when I got the Digitact. I think it, it must already be like five, five or six years um, that I've had it. And I just feel like the moment that I got this specific piece of gear, it kind of brought everything together in terms of live set. Because before that I was programming and at my drums and doing everything in Ableton and using a push, which you know worked great for the time, but because I also sing, it just it felt a little bit um, distracting to constantly have to like worry about the pads, whereas this feels more intuitive and I can kind of I've gotten to the point where like when I'm performing I can just use one hand to kind of do things with a digitact and you know it holds both like field recordings, samples, drums, um, and it's constantly evolving. And then when I added the Digitone a couple years ago, that was a really nice kind of like compliment and also just, you know, fits really well sort of on the pedal board. Some of the more interesting synths that I feel like really sort of helped to expand Palette stuff was like a, the Lyra 8 um, was a really big one and sort of like starting to mess around with a little bit more like noise machines. Um, there's a really cool box um, which is just kind of, I think it's called Drone Thing. It's literally this like little blue box and it's just got oscillators that you can filter through and you know, and it's a pedal. So it's just, you know, nine volts, stick it on a pedal board and just starting to experiment with those types of things then led me into buying my first pieces of Euro rack, and then we all know how that goes. I don't know, so I feel like the collection just keeps growing and growing, and a lot of the things and a lot of the synths are sort of like one-offs, you know, it'll be like, oh, I have, um, I'm working on my record or I'm working on a film and I'll do a sampling session with it. Whereas the stuff that's on my pedal board, I feel like I'm actively playing into my sessions just because I feel like they're recreatable, which with film scoring, it's like you get so many revisions that you need to be able to have things change on the fly. Um, and I feel like everything that I have on here can do that. Whereas a lot of the synths and um, machines and everything that I really love are very finicky, so it's better to just sample them and then be able to stretch them and do stuff that way and doing sampling sessions rather than, you know, expecting to be able to like recreate a pattern on a DFAM again, you know, sort of thing. Well, what's funny is that people talk about, um, still talk about hybrid score in the way that, you know, like maybe 20 years ago, we would have started seeing electronics being integrated into scores and it was like such a thing. But now, like, I don't really, th I think we're way past that. Even like John Williams has a programmer that has synth, you know, like there's synth in everything. So um, I do think it's interesting that people still will kind of categorize me as like, oh, an electronic composer, but it's like everyone is composing on digital platform, you know, on digital, on computers, so um, it's, it's very interesting. Actually.